Hello and welcome to Horn Club, the online saxophone magazine with me, Bob Whitaker and Dean Masser. Hello. Uh, coming up in this episode, we have a, a mouthpiece shootout. Um, Dean, you're going to play four different types of mouthpieces. Yeah. On a, a Boucher, 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 Boucher Alto. Boucher, yeah. Yep. Um, so we'll have a listen to what their different mouthpieces sound like on a, on a vintage horn. Hmm. Yep. Great. Um, in the Bebop Cookbook, uh, we're going to discuss getting a strong swing feel. Um, so looking forward to that. But first, as ever, Sax News. In the Sax News this week, it's January 2021, and here in the UK, we're in the middle of another COVID lockdown. Uh, so what are you going to do with your time? Well, we thought we'd do some book recommendations. Uh, Sax biographies is an absolute plethora of uh, biographies out there at the moment. Um, but we thought we'd pick a few of our favourites. And first up is this one. Walk Tall, The Music and Life of Julian Cannibal Adley. Crack and read. Um, next. The Territory and the Adventure. Ornette Coleman. Even if you're not into Ornette Coleman or Free Jazz, it's a really, really good read. Um, well worth checking out. And probably our favourite um, is this little nugget. Sophisticated Giant, The Life and Legacy of Dexter Gordon. Um, particularly like this one because it's kind of an autobiography. Dexter had written most of it himself when he was alive and one of his dying wishes was it his wife, Maxine, would finish it off. And a fantastic job she's done off. So check some of these out. We'll put links below. It'll certainly give you uh, something to do after your practice and YouTube viewing and so on. Uh, next in the news, um, here at Horn Club, we have had some really positive responses um, to our Beepop cookbook sections of our videos. Um, they're always can have a little tip on how to uh, raise your game. Um, sometimes a little controversial, sometimes going against the establishment, but uh, that's what we're here for. Um, so keep your eyes peeled because we are currently filming and producing um, for a new website, which is going to be called Beatbop Cookbook. And it's going to be jam packed full of lessons on how to get that beatbop sound, phrasing, timing, um, as you're probably aware by now, if you watch some of these videos, the whole premise is really about less maths and more fun. Um, so what we, do we mean by that? Basically, not learning thousands and thousands of chords and scales, uh, using tiny chords, um, using our leading note diminished uh, method, and then spending most of the time working on rhythm and really getting those offbeats sorted out. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled again, um, and we'll keep you posted when we're about to launch that website. And that's the news this week. Thank you. 
so it's quite interesting hearing four different mouthpieces on a vintage horn. Yeah, yeah. You know, and some of them, well, most of them readily available. Mm. Selma Sea Star. Yep. Yep, straight out of the box. Maya, Maya. 6M. 6M, yeah. Yep. Box down. Uh, what was that? I know you had a, a nice RPC. What was the. Yeah. The other thing. And the other one was a Selma Soloist style. Oh, Soloist style, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. again, easy enough to get hold of. Yeah. 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 Um, did you think, because there's obviously um, on certain parts of the internet, um, people, particularly when you're dealing with vintage saxophones, people recommend that this saxophone has to have this kind of mouthpiece and this saxophone has to have that kind of mouthpiece. Mm. Large chamber for this and yeah. medium for this and so on. But they were quite different mouthpieces. And well, that's it. That's, I mean, that's, what, that's why I was quite keen to do that, really. Yeah. You know, just to show that they all work. It's, it's fine. <laughs> it's yeah. all fine. Yeah. You know, um, you know the Sea Star was nice for my kind of... Uh, I hesitate to say classical playing. Cause right, OK. <laughs> sorry, folks. <laughs> Not my thing. But it certainly lends itself to that. And also... Well, it gives that, that nice cool school sound as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah kind of Paul Desmond-y mm -hmm. kind of vibe. Again, it's not my... It's not my field of expertise by any yep. stretch, but it but it works. It, it works. And if I was going down that avenue, that would that would be a perfectly a good setup. Um, you know, the mayor did what mayors do. That that went on, sat there really nicely. Tried like, and tested for years and years, aren't they? So. Yeah, great for just general all round alto yep. playing. The art. Hasten to add, and none none of these have been refaced or any no. magic or anything. They're just straight out of the box. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, off um, the shelf. Yeah, the same is true of the uh, soloist style. That's not yeah. that's not just a neat standard E facing. Yeah. You can still buy something similar. Yeah. Again, off the shelf, work work great. Mm -hmm. um, great kind of you know jazz combo mayor's piece, yep. lead alto mayor's piece, and then the and then the hooligan boutique the mayor's piece. Yeah. The RPC really gave it some really gave it some yep. zing, you know. Um, but yeah. That, I can't see a case for them being, you know, very picky on mayor's pieces at all. You know. No. So. Good. Mm. We put that to rest then? Yeah, I hope so. There you go then. So uh, four different mouthpieces on uh, a vintage saxophone. <laughs> So a much discussed topic is swing feel mm. and how to get a good swing feel. Mm. Uh, there's plenty of videos on YouTube about it. Lots, of different, of lots and lots of different takes. Mm. Uh, what's your thoughts? Well, for me, the biggest factor in all, all of that is, I think, a little bit of a, a kind of misconception, if you like. Okay. And you know those... Have you seen those... You could get mugs and T-shirts... Friends don't let friends clap on one and three. Yeah. Hmm. Well, for me, that's part of the trouble. Okay. See, I was always taught that, you know, to develop a strong swing feel, what you must do is put a metronome on and have it clicking on two and four. Right. Yeah. And then you play along to it. Mm -hmm. And you think, yeah, groovy. I am mm. swinging. Hmm. The trouble is, though, is that that's just the feeling that the metronome's giving you, because it's on, you know, on the offbeats, as it were. If I sing that same phrase and clap on one and three, which is where the strong beats are, it's nature, you can't get away from it, then suddenly it goes, that da ba da ba da ba da 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 ba da ba da ba da 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 That's not swinging. It's a bit folky, isn't it? It's a lot folky. It reminds me of Morris dancing. Yeah. See, we are British after all. Mm. Mm. If you practice with the metronome on one and three, right, you'll immediately know if it sounds wooden, da, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da, da, yeah. all on the beat and things. Yep. So you start to. Right. Yeah. You see. Okay. So it it for, it's not so much that it forces the issue. But it doesn't fool you into thinking that you're swinging when you're not. Okay. So that's my top tip for developing a swing. One and three, not two and four. Mm. Okay. And, yeah, it's, it's my top tip. And 
it's free. <laughs> <laughs> so far. Uh, great. OK, there you go, then. Uh, slightly controversial idea on swing. So that brings us to the end of another Horn Club episode and we hope you've enjoyed it and you found it informative, useful, uh, can take something away from it and if you have, remember to like the video, give us a big thumbs up and please, please, please hit the subscribe button um, so we can continue bringing these vids to you and uh, we'll see you in the next one.